Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore. This time we're gonna, um, I think we're gonna see the match between Claude and Lance. So that's exciting, the chess match. Ooh, fun, fun to watch. But I can't understand. I don't play chess. I just know how the pieces move. <laughs> that's all. A council made up entirely of witches. Hmm? Dolora looks thoughtful as she pulls a mug of hot chocolate towards her. Parfait is seated beside her. It's been a while since the structure was implemented here. It has been a few days since Claude and I officially suggested the idea of a council of witches with the, to the king. Claude and I have been discussing the idea ever since we met with him. Today, after cementing the I details of the idea, we came to discuss the proposal of Delora and Waltz. It'll be nice to have some structure for a change. It was just Hildir calling the shots during the war. Very one-sided, let me tell you. At the end of the day, your word is law, but who can object to special meetings? I'm sure other witches would love that idea. All of us are very fond of sharing our opinions, after all. I look pointedly at Delora. Some more than others. Delora crosses her arms and snorts. I could say the same about you, princess. So what inspired the idea? Claude, who had been standing idly by the bar speaking with Annis and Waltz, turns to look at Parfait. Lucette and I see how biased the human counselor's opinions can be. It doesn't make sense to rely solely on them. We thought a council of witches should be able to represent some of the more subdued voices in Anjali. You came to a good conclusion, Princeling. What do you think, Waltz? Waltz, who had been busy helping Annis with the ditches, looks up and smiles. It would mean more representation for the witches and the government, wouldn't it? I could never disagree with that. Either way, I would trust Lucette's opinion on anything. And what of my opinion? Hmm. Walt surveys Claude with a mischievous smile. Well, I suppose for someone who's kid sized, you are pretty reliable. Kid sized? Is Waltz bigger? <laughs> they look the same size. So I don't know what you mean by kid size. If he's kid size, then you're just slightly above kid size, Waltz. Like, bruh? Why kid size? Are you talking about. What, who are you talking about? Like. Kid sized? I assure you that you are still far more of a child than I am. I'm taller and older than you, you know. That doesn't mean he's kid sized, Waltz. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Waltz. You are slightly taller. Slightly. Slightly taller doesn't mean somebody shorter than you is kid size, you know. If it's if it's like that, then um let me think of an example. Then my grandma is kids. Oh wait, that makes sense. Never mind. Um Then um then I'm kid sized. And I'm not kid sized, I'm average. So um, that would mean half of the popu- half? Most of- most of the population? Is kid size? What am I talking about? <laughs> anyway... Claude is not kid sized. Somebody shorter than you is not kid sized. Kid size is somebody like my sister who's actually a kid. And my grandma. And you also spend your days playing hide and seek with the children and putting on your magic shows. Waltz laughs. 
Better to be an oversized child than a kid-sized one. And also, that's wrong. <laughs> Your opinion is wrong. Because I said so. My opinion is like the best opinion there is. It's like the highest form of opinions that can be formed. It's like God tier opinion. Anything I say goes, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Parfait clears the throat and the two men stop to look at her. Anyway, I hope that you'll explain the importance of this idea to Sina when he visits. He's been s saying lately that he can't stand the kind of meetings with other fairies. The Laura grins. What, is he calling them useless again? Actually, he calls them irritating. I think maybe he could learn a thing or two from Musette's dedication or to teamwork. Cinnamon is Parfait's blood-related cousin. He is apparently the best candidate for succeeding her as the Lotus Bearer despite his young age. Lately, Parfait has been taking him to meetings to teach him more about the Bearer's responsibilities. I have met him a few times and he is... Temperamental. Well, at least he's still a child. She casts a fond smile at Claude's and... Claude's. <laughs> that's their ship name, by the way. Now, Claude and Waltz? Oh, that's the best ship in this game. Like, Claude's. What am I trying to get across here? I make no sense, but my opinion is like the best thing you'll ever hear. You know? I just I just have a big brain. She casts a fond smile at Claude and Maltz. Thankfully, more of a child than you two are. I'm not sure whether to be offended or not. Aw, honey, you're <laughs> you get offended all the time. You can get offended this time too. Dolora smirks and shakes her head. Well, ignoring our cinnamon problem. She glances between Claude and I. You two can rest assured that we'll start looking into setting up this properly. She turns to Claude and raises an eyebrow. Sometimes, Prince, you manage to surprise me. I thought you were lazy, but you're actually quite diligent. I definitely take offense to that. The room erupts into laughter. Even Annis, who had been busy in her work, stops to beam at us. As our conversation is drawing to a close, I glance at the clock and notice the time. I recall why we were supposed to meet with Lance soon. We should probably be going now. Claude has important matters to attend to do today. Do I? I don't seem to recall. He stopped speaking when I glare at him. Perhaps you need to try a little harder to remember then. Claude only sighs when I grab his arm and pull him to the door of the merchant in the direction of the challenge venue. Ah. Does he want to escape from actually doing the challenge or something? Does he really not like chess? <laughs> the two of us have barely made it a few steps into the main plaza and I turn to look at Claude, eyebrows raised. Is there a reason for your footsteps are so heavy and slow? You don't really mean to annoy Lance even more, do you? Of course I do. Don't you purposely try to get in your siblings' nerves sometimes? Well... The princess does not have any blood siblings. Like she's already an adult, part of, uh, partly an adult, uh, when she got siblings. So she wouldn't be thinking of annoying them. So I don't think she can understand what Claude is trying to come uh, get across.
Oh, love, you're no fun. He inconvenienced me when he came to Anzi so early. So it's only right that I get him back by showing up to his challenge late. Shouldn't you be the bigger person and... Oh, Lucette, look! He abruptly taps my shoulder and points to us at a stand sterling from little cupcakes. We've already been to this place multiple occasions. The moment the stall owner sees us looking, he raises his hand in greeting, uh, in greeting and beams. Okay, like see, Princess doesn't understand what you're talking about, Claude. <laughs> she doesn't have siblings since birth or uh, close to a birth. She won't understand why you why you're doing this. What do we say we make a quick stopover for our cupcake first? As always, he loves to change the subject. Are you sure that's a good idea? You might not be able to concentrate after eating so much sugar. Nonsense. Sugar could never ruin my concentration. A little sugar never hurt anyone, you know? That's what I always say because I always want to eat sugar. I'm always... Uh, on the side of eating sugar but when it comes to other people when it comes to other people I would want them to take care of their health more and not eat too much sugar but when it comes to me I would just be like yeah it's just a little bit not it can't hurt me watch me have watch me get diabetes <laughs> You know, rich rich country problems, you know, diabetes. So I guess continue walking. I sigh as I take Claude's arms and pull him forward. Claude glances back at the cupcakes with clear longing in his eyes. Ah, <sighs> so close, yet so far. Parting will do you no good. Besides, do you really want to lose your, to your brother? Claude turns her from the stand with a scowl. Of course not. Much to my relief, he slides his arm off my grasp and begins to strike forward on his own. Much to my relief, he slides his arm off my grasp and begins to strike forward on his own, making it much easier to move. I follow after him, glad to see him finally taking it this seriously. Eventually, the two of us reach our destination. Claude agreed to meet Lance in the dining hall along with Emmeline and Rod, who are both sitting there with now with him. The three are immersed with the conversation when we enter. The steps are a lot faster in Bergenshin style of dance. Emmeline sighs. Too fast! It's almost impossible not to trip over my own two feet. How am I supposed to learn this in time for the wedding? Lance laughs. If it makes you feel any better, I'd be more than happy to be your dance partner during the wedding, Princess Emily. I wouldn't mind if you stepped on my feet. I'm more worried for her stepping on her gown, to be honest. Like, stepping on her feet? Nah. Okay, whatever. Boring. That's old news. Yo, I always step on other people's feet when walking forward. So that's boring. That's old news. Stepping on your gown? Well, that's something I also do. Um, I think stepping on people's uh, your own gown is more dangerous because you would just stop your. You, it would stop your motion. It's. It's not like stepping on others peop other people's feet. It will inconvenience them, but you're you're safe, right? <laughs> stepping on your own gown, now that will make you trip and fall. So she should be worrying about her gown more than other people's feet. Am I the type of person who likes to inconvenience other people? Is that who I am now? What have I become? I used to step on people's feet all the time practicing the same dance after all. 
but I'd feel terrible. And it, it really isn't too hard as long as you keep your eyes on your partner. How am I meant to do that when I have no idea where my feet are? This wouldn't happen to be the dance you are helping Emmeline with, Lance. The three look up as we enter the room. Lance narrows his eyes abruptly at Claude. The two brothers eyed the elaborate chessboard already set up on the, on the table. It is! Lance is helping me learn it for the wedding. She glances at Lance, but his attention is already focused on Claude. You're late. Sorry, Lucette and I were at the merchant discussing some important proposal with two witches and a fairy. He smiles smugly at his brother as he takes a seat right in front of him. Both Emmeline and Roy rise to sit further down the table, where I have already taken the liberty of sitting myself. It's like the temperature suddenly decreased in here. They're very competitive, aren't they? Perhaps to a fault. They're like two bickering children. Both men are staring at each other with grim expressions on their faces. They look like two war generals on opposite sides of a battle. This is all very anticlimactic, isn't it? I would have preferred sword fighting. Of course you would have, because you preferred the easy win. You can't stand to lose. Me? Lose? I rarely lose. <laughs> Alright, because you're perfect. The two men began the game with severe frowns. I glanced briefly at Emmeline and Rod, who watched quietly. Rod looks unimpressed, while Emmeline looks more worried than anything. She leans towards me and whispers. It's strange to see Lance like this. I look more closely at Lance, who seems eclipsed by some dark aura as he moves his pieces. He never peels his solemn gaze away from Claude, who looks immeasurably uncomfortable. Aren't they being too serious about this? Apparently, challenging someone in the, to a game of chess is a very serious thing in Bargantia. Wait. Did I spell Bargantia wrong this whole time or is it a satipo? I'm pretty sure the U comes before the R. Not okay. Oh my goodness. Emmeline chuckles softly. I don't know. This seems very similar when you and Rod are trying to show each other up in dancing. Dancing requires far more fo focus. Fo more, far more focus on chess? Really? I don't know, man. I, I, I don't do dancing or... Or do chess. I, I don't know how much focus they require. I'm pretty sure Rod is just saying that so that he looks more impressive. He looks at me pointedly. Though I can at least say that I have better focus than Lucette because I'm the superior dancer. I narrow my eyes at him. Just you wait, Rod. I will make you swallow those words. We'll have Sebi there to judge next time. Sebi is hardly a good judge. He will always call you the better dancer just to get on my nerves. Perhaps we should have brought Sebi here to lighten the mood. Cloud looks up, irritation flashing through his eyes. Can you three keep it down there? Over there? I can hardly focus on my strategy with all this background noise. Bruh, you wanted an audience. <laughs> That's what an audience does. They make noise during an event. And what? That's all they're there for. Why Why did you ask for an audience when you wanted it to be peace and quiet? Like, bruh? You didn't ask for this? You, make, you practically asked for this to happen. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. 
excuse me? Len smirks as he moves a piece up the square and knocks one of Bud's pieces off the board. You fiend! Sir Will was just a young man! Len sighs as he sits back in his chair. Bud leans over the board with a grumble. You're a brutal commander, Lama. In a real war, you, my, your men would be dead. They're chess pieces. You remember what father used to say, treat the chessboard like the battlefield. I know the, that the men who serve you are just as loyal to the true king. Have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten anything. Man leans forward to move the piece off the cloth. As the match goes on, it becomes more and more apparent that Lens is slowly taking over the board. Flat, flat. <laughs> Plot watches in sullen silence. What's wrong? Has my imminent victory left you at loss for words? Plot just grunts in response as he moves another one of his pieces. Were this a, ba uh, were this a battlefield, you'd be sacrificing far too many soldiers. This is a chessboard. Your technique is surprisingly savage. Men slurs at him. Perhaps we should have fought with swords. At least I would have been able to knock some sense into your thick skull. Emmeline and Rod stare at Lance in shock. Lance finishes the game when he takes Claude's king. He is still grimacing though, his face flushed with anger. Checkmate. And there we have it, the expected outcome. Hmm, I don't know about that. Plot gestures at a stolen king. You may have taken my crown, but that doesn't mean you know how to wear it. How you win is an important is is as important as the victory. What is that supposed to mean? If this were a real battle, that crown would be meaningless. Bought to with too much sacrifice. Plot shakes his head. So you see, I may have lost, but at least I have more of the king's sensibilities. You always twist the outcome to your favor, don't you? You're con condescending when you win and hostile when you lose. Me? Hostile? I hardly get riled up as you do. Don't act so innocent now. Man stands from the table as his cheeks flushed. You're always like that, always putting on a facade and pretending to be the good older brother when all you really do is berate and criticize me. And even when I call you on you to help or assist me, you refuse. When I try to be considerate, you call me weak. And you always, always have to compare the two of us to boost your own ego. Just because I can't be as good as you. He pauses suddenly, his posture stiff. And then he abruptly steps away from the table. Thank you for the game. He begins to stride away, eyes flashing with anger. I notice that his hands are balled into fists as he passes us by, making his way towards the door. What just happened? Lama just expressing his true feelings, I think. He has a habit of not showing them until he's angry. This has always been how I've gotten him to speak with me. Should we go after him? That doesn't seem like it would be the best idea. It's obvious he wants space. Most of men I know keep to themselves when they're irritated, Claude included. But from my experiences with Claude, I also know that talking about your problems is, better, is the better solution. I rise from my chair. Be that as it may, I am still going to go after him. Rod has a point, actually. Usually when Lance walks off like this, he needs time by himself to reflect. What happens when you follow him? He thinks I'm trying to antagonize him. Suffice to say, it usually doesn't end up well. Maybe he will be more receptive to me then, because I'm not you. Hmm, perhaps. I'm going to go search for him. You can come join us when you're ready to speak with him. 
Fine, I'll catch up with him after I clean up the board, Lucette. Would you like us to tag along, Lucette? She definitely doesn't need our help, um. But Prince Lance... He's fine. Rod speaks curtly through enough that Emmeline stops speaking, but she still looks at me worriedly. I hardly think he would appreciate such a large audience to his rules. I'll count on you if I need any assistance. Alright then, Rod and I will be here if you need us. I nod, then turn towards the door and make my way outside. After questioning some of the nearby servants, I am able to pinpoint Lance's location at the palace gates. I make my way there and find him standing close to the gates with his gaze upturned. He is staring up at the, vacantly, at the sky vacantly. He looks up when I approach, his eyes glittering with guilt. He quickly turns away. Hello, Lance. He responds with a small, sheepish smile. I apologize for my behavior. It was not very dignified, was it? I believe that Clark only antagonized Lance that he would tell him how he truly felt, but... I also question whether he or not he knows how to handle these matters. Okay, so like... I don't know what dismissed or apology means. Like... You just say don't be sorry or... You shouldn't be sorry. Or what? What does it mean? I don't get it. My English is not too good. <laughs> I don't understand what this is. The apology. What? Oh, no. I forgot my screen is <laughs> that screen. <laughs> I don't know what this missed apology would mean, but I know that scolding Lance would lead to him um, not showing his emotions anymore. Oh my goodness. He, he would not show emotions anymore and that he wouldn't be true to himself anymore and that he wouldn't speak about his emotions because I scolded him. Because it would mean what you are saying, what you truly feel when you're, when you're pent up is wrong but scolding him would, could also mean that uh nothing uh telling him that holding all that uh anger build up is not good so either of these choices could be the it depends on what they mean because they're so vague <laughs> i don't know what any of these voices would would end up with what the so what the outcome would be because the, it's just so vague I I can't really tell I don't want to dismiss the apology though so let's go lens No, it was not. You ought to have said something to Claude before it came to this. Ah, so I was right. It was about scolding him about holding it all in. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Lance froze his eyebrows at me. This has always been how Claude and I solve our problems. By driving each other to the pinnacle of a fight? He deflates with a soundless sigh. Not very sensible, is it? No, not at all. It seems to me that it would have been a lot easier to tell someone how you feel before letting it get to that point. Otherwise, your public aggression marks on other people's opinion of you. You are refreshingly, refreshingly honest, princess. I hope you plan to on scolding Claude for this as well. Scold him for what exactly? For being ungentlemanly and, and petty. Petty? Anyway, I think it would be helpful to get a better way to vent your aggression. That goes for Claude too. Lance looks like he's about to say something, but then I notice him looking past my shoulder. He quickly diverts his eyes. 
What's this? I could have sworn the conversation was happening here, but now all I hear are crickets. What do you come here for? To scold me? Yes, I was gonna scold you as any other older brother ought to, but it seems my lovely fiancé has already done it so for me. You're eavesdropping? Of course not. I just happen to have very good ears. So you are eavesdropping. Since the set has already spoken with you, I came here not to talk, but to apologize. You? Apologize to me? You make me sound like a heartless cretin, Lance. Cretin is like the thing you put on salads, right? Like... The... the like, stale... Is it stale bread? Or is it hardened bread? Like those things that you put on bread. You know? That's a cretin, right? Maybe you're not heartless, but you certainly can act like it. Uh, like act it sometimes with how condescending and demeaning you are. Yes, and for that I apologize. Such is the manifestation of my jealousy. Jealousy? You're jealous of me? For a few moments, Lance looks surprised, then he, but then he sighs. Why would you be jealous of me? Sometimes, Lama, you can be ob extremely obtuse. Do I really need to explain it to you? You call me perfect, but have you ever stopped to look at the people around you? They adore you. I don't understand. You're living like a f uh, you're living a fairy tale thought. Meanwhile, I'm living in your shadow. Without you and Bergantia, I'm set for nothing but failure. Thought frowns at his brother. Maybe I should retract my apology. This is pitiful. Lance's eyes flashed with anger. You're always like this. I'm honest with you, and you chest ch chastise me for it. Because Lance, the Lance I know is competitive and fierce, and doesn't back away from a challenge. You... He is polite to others around him, but not so feeble that he admits defeat to his own brother. When Lance finally does speak, his voice is soft. I could never do what you've done, Karma. What? Moving to Antley, picking up a mantle that had been handed out to me? Lance smiles a little sadly. After all, it is only taken your moving out of Brigantia to unravel my confidence. How do I improve it if I don't have you there to challenge me? How do I know if I, how to act if I don't have you there to be my role model? So in the end, this whole situation is a result of Lance comparing himself to Claude and Claude comparing himself to Lance. What a foolish brother I have. Wh what? You have the opportunity to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with me now. Before, when I went to the Genshin title, you always spoke of how incompetent of a king I would be. You always said that you could have, you could do better. Now you have the chance to prove it that to my fiancé and me. Lance glances between the two of us silently. His expression is sh of shock is so childish, I cannot help but smile. The new alliance between Antle and Bragantia brings our two countries closer than they ever been before. We'll both be counting on you to help us mend the gap once you take over the throne. And when you do, I don't expect you to act like me, I expect you to act like yourself. I recall the way Lance acted during the speech practices and he told me that it was terrible in front of crowds. But Claude has said this before, that the two of them took speaking lessons together. Now I can see why he was so frustrated at Lance for the way he was practicing. It was because he was trying to be someone he was not. Lance was caving beneath that pressure. Lance? Lance turns to look at me. Princess Lucette? I remember a time when Amelin was stressed because she was trying to act like other nobles. I remember a time when my the whole world was mother, and I wanted so much to be just like her. So much that I did not see the world around me. So much that I did not even learn to 
form my own opinions until I had stepped out of a shadow. There are certain responsibilities every king has to his people, but your words and actions should be yours and yours alone. Plot smiles at me. You always know how to put things so aptly, darling. He turns back to his brother. But yes, all I want you to realize is that we are on equal footing. I know how heavy the responsibilities of a king can be, but those responsibilities ought to be faced by the, be faced the way you want to face them. That is what living in Ensley has taught me. Even if those around me have differing opinions, I could never sacrifice my own values and beliefs. He glances at me. Though our lovely princess here has strong opinions, we work things out together. That is what it means to be both separate and equal to someone. Hans looks at us both thoughtfully for a few moments. The silence seems to put Claude on edge because he looks like he's about to on the verge of scolding his brother again. Then suddenly, Lance laughs. I'm happy you fell in love with my brother, Lucette. I feel like the only reason he's matured is because of you. Claude may sometimes be flamboyant and childish, but I feel that without him, I wouldn't have learned to be as mature either. And without him, I would never have learned this kind of happiness, this kind of love. I guess now that he's gone, I get to prove myself. He looks at Claude, the competitive glint back in his eyes. This time, I will not falter. Ah, uh, those words are music in my ears, Lama. Could you not maybe call me that? Lama isn't very sophisticated. No, it isn't. That's why I enjoy using it so much. Don't worry, Lance. Claude is still refers to himself as the Chameleon Prince, and that definitely is not sophisticated at all. Claude blushes when his brother laughs, and just like that, the tension between them evaporates. The days pass in a blur. Though the things should be less busy considering the circumstances, my schedule only gets tighter with the, the wedding so close. Claude and I have far too many rehearsals when my family continues to ask for my opinions about the feast that will occur afterwards. The days are more exhausting than they have been for in, in weeks. Two years ago, when you came to me for advice on how to be good, do you remember what I said first said to you? That was two years ago in the tavern when I was still trying to understand what goodness meant. The first piece of advice Claude gave me to pertain to Oh no I don't remember That was the first advice that he gave me. I think it was beauty, wasn't it? It was beauty. He's he's always talking about beauty. I think. I think. Let's go with beauty. Wasn't it something about being beautiful both on the inside and out? You remember? Yes! I'm so smart, guys. So smart. So big brain. It is impossible not to. You put painstaking efforts into your appearance, always. I did. You still do. Plot grins. Of course, but back then it was a beauty that was meant to hide the truth rather than to express it. Miss Karma was my, is my favorite disguise, you know. You make it sound like you had more than one. Who said I? Who's to say I didn't? I did like sneaking out of the palace to and avoiding my responsibilities. He pauses for a few moments, contemplating, then softly he sighs. There was a time when I valued beauty above all other, th other things, even when a witch decided to make my so-called beauty a curse. He points at the beast plush that I have in my hands. I never liked the beauty and the beast fairy tale growing up. I always thought that the witch was being too cruel for the, to the prince and dooming him to an empty life that he didn't even learn if he didn't learn a hard lesson. When a witch set simil a similar curse upon me, I despised her. 
I wanted the proof that I could break the spell without ever changing. I never realized how much I needed to change until... His eyes fall on me. Until you came along. Had I not met you, Doucette, I might have still been on the same cursed... I might have still been the same cursed man. Maybe I would have been a little wiser, but I would still be called the spoiled crown prince of Bergantia. And now? He comes to sit me with a smile. The crown prince of Antle and a future husband to the loveless lady in this realm. The most beautiful on the inside and out. He takes the beast flush from my hands and holds it up. So you see, just like the prince in a fairy tale, I only found my true calling when I met you, princess. And I wanted to thank you for that. I lean my head on his shoulder with a smile. Ah, uh, gosh. You don't need to thank me, Claude. Is that it? No heartwarming response, though? I laugh as I nod my head to the... the in, into the crook as his neck. I'm saving that for the, my wedding bar tomorrow. We'll have to wait patiently until then. I suppose I didn't have a choice in the matter, do I? He kisses the top of my head. A gentle s silence falls over us after that. But it is comfortable and calming. I'm content to wrap my arms around Claude's waist and settle on my head and his shoulder. Thank you, Claude. May it be granted that what is done before the gods cannot be undone by man. Before I proclaim you joined by marriage, I, thou must seal this pack with a kiss. I've heard this word so many times before, but here in front of so many people, they seem to ring even louder. Still, I will not falter. The crown princess is always confident. I take a step forward and clasp Claude's hand in mine. But before I can even place one foot in front of the other, he has already stepped a whole close to our nose could brush. It is all I can do to keep from grasping when he puts one hand on my back and tips me backwards. Claude smiles at me mischievously. He is so close I can feel his breath on my cheeks. A ripple of sound runs through the crowd, and I cannot tell whether it is laughter or chattering. Th this wasn't in the rehearsal? I spread the words into his ears. My cheeks flushed. The rehearsal was very boring. I think I have the leisure of breaking some rules. I do not have it in me to protest. God always has a way of aswagging my worries. He is himself no matter the circumstance. His confidence might sometimes be overbearing, but it is also inspiring. I'm only so bold because I have a such a confident queen. You may now kiss the bride. Neither of us hears the minister. In fact, Flot plants a kiss on my lips before he even finishes his sentence. Wait, but that, but that looks like the princess moves closer. Doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, we won't question it. The applause echoing around us is nothing but background noise. All I can feel is a single heart-stopping moments are Claude's lips on mine and his gentle warmth around me. I love you, my beautiful queen. Lactals aside, his words make my heart swell with pride. I kiss him again on the cheek before placing my forehead to his. I love you too, Claude. Okay, we're about to hit the one hour mark. Okay, this episode will be cut short by me editing everything. I hope I edit. I hope I am not lazy and edit, actually edit some parts out. Anyway, subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of visual novels. Like if you like, dislike if you dislike. Comment down below what you think of this episode and suggest some uh, games for me to play and I think that's all thank you for watching and have a good day